Okay, um, let me get started. If you could please take your seats. I would like to welcome you to uh, this orientation event of the uh, Masters in uh, Quantum Engineering here at ETH. We have quite a program. There's a lot of information that we will download on you. Do the best out of it, okay? Some decades from now, this moment could be seen as a historic moment when ETH Zurich took the risk of a world premiere, the first master's course in quantum engineering. Why might this be a risk? Because... Quantum engineering is not existing today, okay? So we have to create it. Is this crazy or clever? My name is Jennifer Kakshori, and for this episode of the ETH podcast, I ask the questions, why did ETH Zurich decide to create this new master's? Why do students choose it? And what the heck is quantum engineering actually? Act one, motivation. Okay, my name is Lukas Novotny and um, I'm a professor of photonics and in my research group we study the interaction of light with materials. I am the director somehow of this program and that's why I'm welcoming you. Um, you're the first generation in this program. It's really exciting because you can feel the spirit of changing something and uh, driving this quantum wave or quantum revolution, I'd say. And therefore, it's exciting to be part of this master. This is Anja, one of the 25 students of the master's degree of quantum engineering. From the 25 students, only three of them are women. They all come from all over the world, from China, Canada and India. It's pretty exciting to be a, you know, a quantum engineering student in itself. I think the uh, quantum transport and the FedEx part is most fascinating for me. What do I do? Um, I think nobody really knows. <laughs> Anja is from Switzerland. Nobody knows where this quantum road leads to. So it's also a bit fear about the uncertainty of things. All of this sounds exciting and mysterious. So it's the next big thing, but nobody really knows what it is. Let's ask the person responsible for this new ETH degree, Lukas Novotny. If at all anyone should have an idea what it is, he should. Quantum engineering, I think there is no general accepted definition. So my working definition of this is the development of technology that makes use or capitalizes on the laws of quantum mechanics. I'd say engineering is about building or uh, developing things. So I'm developing or building technologies, products, which are in a scale which is a billion times smaller than a hair. So tiny, 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 tiny. And in this regime scale, normal classical physics does not apply, but there are special rules which you have to use to work with these systems. We are currently at the critical point where we are able to control processes in the microscopic scale. So this has not been possible okay, in previous decades, just with the advent of nanotechnology, for example. We are now able to structure materials so that we can engineer their quantum properties. How about practical applications? Maybe we're not yet there at the quantum computer commercially produced or also used, but... I think with this new technology, which works so differently than the technology we had so far, there's a great potential who can change a lot of things in how things work. So now you just take the next logical step, okay? So which chapter of physics is still unexplored in terms of technology? And this is quantum mechanics. Lucas is not a quantum engineer. I just see here the opportunity to establish something new. And this is why I put my effort in it. And it's really brand new. There is no other place in the world where you can do a master's in quantum engineering. Everybody has to 
you know, bet on some horses, okay, where they hope to have an edge over the competition. And I think um, we took here a certain leadership at ETH as um, probably one of the first quantum engineering programs that is rooted in engineering. Act 2. Implementation. The ignition to this brand new degree took place in the electrical engineering department of ETH Zurich. It was a brainstorming late, late night after a meeting that we have every year here. And we thought if we can do something that gives us an edge, then this will be through education. So train a new generation of engineers that is versed in the quantum sciences. Anya, the student, remembers her motivation letter for the master's course. I wrote something like, oh, for me it makes perfectly sense running towards a wall and then um, hitting my head to it and asking myself, why can't I tunnel through this wall or something like that? So I kind of um, try to express also my passion about this field. By the way, the metaphor of the wall and breaking through, it refers to quantum mechanics, as insiders know. I didn't know. The electron is facing a wall of higher energy, like a mountain. Even though it, it bounces to this um, wall, there is a probability that it comes out at the other side. So it can tunnel through this, that's the tunnel effect, tunnel through this wall. Is that why you use the example in your motivation letter with a wall? Yeah, I think yes, exactly, because it's um, common ground, so everybody knows it. The Masters of Science in Quantum Engineering is a joint venture between the physicists and the electrical engineers at ETH. And why that? Because this is the logical interface between quantum science and quantum technology. But the engineers leave their mark on the master's course. We take quantum science as a toolbox. And this toolbox There are the laws of quantum mechanics inside, and the question is, what can we do with it? So science is about why, and engineering is more about what for. So one of my fellow students had the idea of creating this quantum paper club. We are in a group in our free time, so every Tuesday, look at a, a publication, at a paper, and talk about it, just to get also the jargon from this field and to look at research which is happening and to, yeah, of course, um, get into interaction with each other. I feel a good vibe. So we're explaining each other the things we don't understand and discuss and work together. So I think we're a good group. And, uh, and this paper club already expresses the motivation and the enthusiasm we have. So there's a lot of energy. <laughs> there's a degree awarded to you at the end. If you acquire 120 point credits. It is structured into four semesters. We have core courses, stuff that we want you to know. And we have elective courses that is free for, you know, depends whether you like it or not. And we have some practical components. There is this internship. We have a semester project and we have a master thesis. The curriculum seems structured like any other master's program. In the end, the young engineers will be equipped with a chunk of knowledge and a brand new title. I think I, I like to improvise. That's what Lucas says about his passion, which is cooking, as well as building a new degree. The road of the new master's course in quantum engineering might be rocky at first. Progress is about failure at the end. That's how it is in research, And in cooking. For me, it's improvising, failing, improving. The curriculum of the master is in progress, so it's we're kind of trying it out this year, and that's also nice because we can probably at the end of the year give feedback. How was it for us? What do we want to have changed? And this is really great, but maybe we don't take out the maximum of the, let's say, uh, first semester. Act three, money. Big money, maybe. Quantum is hip, in particular quantum engineering. Salary-wise, the master's degree at ETH could be financially rewarding. Okay, so money is already being made with quantum technology. But this is basically supplying okay, the research. There's a supply chain. Like in the gold rush, people who made a lot of money are those who built the shovels, not those who found the gold. Okay. 
So we have here in Switzerland a couple of companies that are doing a very fine job. They're developing technology that is at the forefront for quantum control. One of these companies that built shovels for the quantum rush is Zurich Instruments. My name is Sadiq Hafizovic. I um, am CEO and co-founder of Zurich Instruments. I uh, came to Switzerland about close to 20 years ago to do my PhD at ETH. And after the PhD, I did a postdoc, and then we spun off the company Zurich Instruments. This company makes instruments that physicists use in their labs. And they also created a control system for quantum computers, computers that are still in development. I'm sure we don't have all the scientific answers on how to build the quantum computer, but today the blood and sweat that goes into it is engineering. So I think it's only appropriate to have education that focuses on the challenges of the quantum computer. For the ETH quantum engineering students, it is possible to do an internship at a tech company to gain insights into the entrepreneurial side of the field. Because it is a new field, it is important to have opportunities to network, whether you come from academia or industry. During the annual Quantum Industry Day, representatives from companies meet each other, among them the big quantum players, IBM, Microsoft and Google. They will need quantum engineers in the future. Maybe one of them will be Badr, one of the 25 students in the master's program. I am coming from Turkey and I am 24 years old. I just started my master's studies here in ETH uh, in this new quantum engineering program. Badr is already talking to people, mingling, and he's building a network at the Quantum Industry Day. Yeah, I, I talked to three different companies and now I still have time to think where I can do my internship and what I can do after my master's. So I guess I still have time to think and I will decide about it later maybe. I didn't see Anya at the Quantum Industry Day. I wasn't there because I signed up too late, so it was already full, but I will go next year. These events are really important because I think networking in such a young and rather small field is it's crucial to kind of get interdisciplinary contacts to work with and to get access to projects and know where you can go after your studies. Epilogue. Expectations. I think many people in this field agree that, that really the, the coming progress in quantum science and technology is limited by the people who are able to address all the open questions that exist in this field. This is Andreas Wallraff. He runs the Quantum Device Lab at ETH and is talking to students during the very first meeting between students and professors of quantum engineering. So I think everybody counts on you and other students like you to help them to move this field forward because currently I think there's, there's more resources than there's people to make good use of these resources. The consequences are monetary. I know of people who earn three hundred or even $400,000 or so more or less right out of their university education. So I, th I think there's, uh, there's good prospects for you. The salary was never a reason to do anything I'm doing because I just assume that I will get enough to have a life that I want to live. I also think doing such a, let's say, complex field of study, if this was your only motivation to do that, then it wouldn't work out because it's, it's, I think it's too hard. So we really need to have the passion for it to um, suffer, let's say, suffer a little to learn all these things. No, I think nobody from these 25 students does it for money reasons or salary. Enthusiastic students and a quantum industry that seems to be in euphoria. To pick up five or ten million for your startup currently is really an easy task and that could be one of your goals uh, at the end of this program. A scientific field full of hopes for a gold rush. Of course we have a picture of what might happen if we build quantum stuff, but there's no guarantee. We can just prepare for the future and hopefully shape a little bit the future. So what I tell you here is a sales pitch. There is no guarantee that this will fly. 
the possibility of the bursting the bubble of revolution is there. But I mean, we're still engineers. So even if it bursts and we see, okay, I don't want to work at this field anymore, I can do other engineering work probably. Because you can say at least, I understand quantum physics, which is so complex, so that I probably can understand anything else, kind of. Even though, yeah, the, the phrase understanding quantum physics is a little bit... Uh, you have to be careful saying this because <laughs> mm, understanding quantum physics 100% is, uh, yeah, I don't think that's so far possible. ETH podcast goes quantum. This episode was produced by Thies Wachter's Audio Story Lab and me, Jennifer Kakshuri. Music, sound design and mastering by Luki Fritz. Thank you very much. Did I forget something important? Something that you wanted to say that I didn't ask? Yes, I am. Um, so I just want to notice at the end that, of course, I wish there were more women in this field. And I think just believe in the things you can do. You, you have a lot of power. You can do anything you want as a man or as a woman, of course, but women normally like the self-confidence more, especially in this field. So don't be afraid of trying out these um, scientific fields and... So I wish to have, let's say, more um, mixed teams also, just because they work a little bit differently and therefore apply and do it. So don't be afraid. It makes a lot of fun. If you like this podcast, please write a review on your preferred podcast channel and tell your friends, especially your female friends, to consider studying quantum engineering.